Hello everyone, welcome back. So today I'm going to show you how I make this thingamajig. Ah, uh, for lack of a better term, I'm going to call it that. Because the word thingamajig actually has the word jig in it. And jigs are used to hold things in certain positions, right? So I think that's a fitting name. And what I'm making is something to hold whatever other project I'm making in an upright position without a chance of it falling down. Um, I've used so many things over the years and I'm actually surprised at myself that I never thought to make something like this. Um, I have used clamps. Let's say I have this piece of wood here with a hole in it and I'm glue, you know, going to epoxy this in. Well, I want this to sit straight up, okay, especially if I'm using a slow cure epoxy. Because if I have this laying down like this, the epoxy could drip out, okay. Um, if I have it in a clamp like this, something like that, it could fall. A lot of times I would use um, a box and I would stick it in the corner. And I would put something over here, like uh, some cloth or something with a weight on it, to hold it. Um, so very rudimentary ways of holding it. Sometimes I would use a clamp. And I said to myself, I'm done with that. I'm going to make something that I could hold something upright. Like uh, if I'm making a handle for a ferro rod or, you know, uh, putting in a epoxy in a tang for a knife or something. Um, you know, I use that G-Flex epoxy, and it's got a pretty long pot life, I think like around 45 minutes, and it takes like three or four hours to get that initial cure. Um, and during that time, if this isn't, if this, you know, is down in this position, it's going to leak out, and I don't want that. So, first off, let me say you can make this as fancy as you want, or as simple as you want. Okay, so I did a little pre-work. This is just scrap pine. Okay, and you got four pieces here. You can make it as big as you want, as small as you want. So I'm just kind of giving you the premise of it, and then you could take it wherever you want. Okay, so the way this is going to work is I have these two pieces, which I'm basically going to call my jaws. Then I have this little piece, which I'm going to call a pull. It's basically like a draw pull. You can put a draw pull on here. You can put a little knob on here. You don't have to put anything on here. You can just use your fingers. Again, you take it to where you want to take it, okay? So this jaw is going to be um, stationary. And then this one is going to have the pull on it, and it's going to get attached on the sides here with a simple little spring, okay? And then the idea is you're going to pull this apart, put whatever you want in there, and then you're going to let the spring go. And this is a very, um, I, I, I don't know what the term is, but it's not very strong, okay? It's strong enough to hold something like this because we're really just worried about it going this way. Not so much um, to hold it in place like a clamp because it's definitely not a clamp. And like I said, you can make it bigger with a stiffer spring something like this, but for this um, instance, we're going to use this. So let me show you, let me get a pair of cutters and let me show you how I made these little ones out of this. I shall be back. All right, I'll give you the measurements in, uh, on, on all of this in case you want to do it yourself exactly like this. Um, so what I do is I take the spring and I'll take about, if you look at it, it's about two turns. So I'll take a little razor blade, be careful with razor blades, and I'll look where the cut part is and I'll turn that down. And then I'll go two turns and I'll take this and just kind of grab it with my finger. See that? And that pushes it down. Okay? Then I just cut it off to whatever length I want. Now, if that gets bent like that, you could trim it off. Then I'll take this. 
take those two turns and bring it down like that okay and you can make that whatever length you want it so now the next thing we're gonna do is I'm gonna take these two pieces and you can like I said simple as you want or as complicated as you want what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna drill some round holes so I have some forcing bits here and I have increments of a quarter inch so I'm gonna have a quarter inch half inch three quarters of an inch and an inch I think that'll cover pretty much the gamut of the things you know that I kinda make alright um, you could leave a flat spot for something that's flat you could put um, like a V notch on each side to make um, you know to, to take various uh, size pieces but I think this will work for me quarter half three quarter and one inch so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take some spring clamps hold this together like this bring it over to the drill press and I'm gonna drill these four holes so let me bring you over there and I'll show you that all right so I got it set up we'll start with the inch hole Now I'll do that with the other three sizes, and then I'll bring you back. All right, so I got the holes drilled. You know, I always say I'm going to give the measurements, and I never do. So I'm going to do that now. So here's what that looks like. Okay, a few more steps, and I'll show you them. But I'm going to give you the measurements. So these pieces are... Just a shy over five and three eighths, or shy under five and a half. Again, you can make them any size you want. And the width is about an inch and three eighths. Okay. And then the base, four and three eighths by six. Again, totally random. I mean, I just cut a couple pieces, and, uh, and there we have it. All right. So now the next thing we're gonna do is. We're going to drill a couple little holes in here to accept a screw to put our spring across, okay? I won't bore you watching that, just a simple couple little holes and then we're going to uh, put a screws in there. All right, I shall All right. be back. So the holes are drilled, just little pilot holes. Now the next thing is I'm going to clean up inside here pretty rough and what I'm going to do is I'm going to chamfer these corners just on the um, half three quarter and one inch and what that's going to allow me to do is something that's bigger than an inch um, will fit in there it'll sort of be well you'll see when I'm done but I'm, I'm basically just going to use sandpaper and chamfer this so that it, it's more of a V shape towards the end and um, so things that are those sizes, an inch obviously would just fit in there with this closed half. Um, and uh, this one's uh, a quarter. No, this one's a quarter, half, three quarter, and one inch. So something that's a little bit bigger with the spring, I'll be able to keep it open. And those chamfers will keep it from flopping. Um, you'll see what I mean when I put it together. So I'm just going to sand those. And I'll bring you back. All right. So I have those little chamfers there. And that's just if I have something very, you know, wide, wider than that, let's say one inch or three quarter. It gives just a little corner where it could grab it um, instead of it pinching it. Just a little detail. I mean, you don't have to do that. So now the next step is I'm just going to use, I have Gorilla Wood Glue here. I use either Gorilla Glue, or Wood Glue, or Tight Bond. And the stuff is so strong. I've had pieces that were glued, you know, for years. And then for some reason, whatever, I took them apart. And the wood actually breaks before the bond does. So probably not going to use any mechanical fasteners on this. For the simple reason that this is not a clamp. We're not holding anything together. 
we're just holding something in place basically all right so um, I bet you all saw that hole there that's where a screw used to be so I'll cover that up with one side something like that and then this is just going to get glued here just like that all right and again no um, no mechanical bond just the glue just make sure you get it cover up the whole surface now here's a little trick I like to do just give it a little shift back and forth and you'll almost just feel it grab make sure you get it all centered where you want it and again this is not a precision instrument this is just like I said the whole things while I'm epoxy them or whatever that looks pretty centered all right so I'll put a clamp on that just a spring clamp I'll glue this to the base and when that dries I'll bring you back all right so the glue's all dried and when I say that is on there that is on there so it's time for the springs I just have these little stainless steel screws doesn't matter what kind of screws you use Don't jam them in, you know, so, so tight that it distorts the end. And you take this side, put that like that. Okay, screw, come out of there. one in and there you go now remember this is not made to be a clamp okay it's just to hold things while the epoxy setting or the paints drying so you got a little bit of play here goes right back in you're not going to want to pull this all the way out too far because the springs are not that strong I mean if you put an, a stronger spring in then you could do that so I'll show you why my plans are how to make this why I made this so let's say again I have this dowel I could just slip that in there I don't have to touch the springy part at all works great now I could epoxy something in there I could you know if I had something that was on top of this to paint works perfect Let's say I have a square piece, okay? Well, okay, well that kind of fits in here, but it kind of wobbles around. So that's where the spring action comes in. I take this, put it in like that, okay? And you could position that, and that'll hold that perfectly aligned to the way you want it. Take that out. Um, this was from when I was testing out the uh, patch knife I made. This was the handle. So, again, doesn't really fit, right? But I could take this, open it up, close that on it, boom. It's all set, ready to go. Epoxy in the blade. So this is going to work out awesome for me. Got a piece of copper pipe, for whatever reason. Just I just picked it because of the diameter. So it doesn't fit in there kind of loose in there but if I open this up place it in there close it on it we got it same thing with the bigger hole this happens to be a little mallet I made for a casting but doesn't really fit in that one inch hole but if I open this up okay I got it in there so that was the reason for making the um, the little curves the little chaffers on the side there as you could see them 
So if you have something much bigger, okay, if I didn't do that, um, the, the uh, edges of the circle would kind of dig into it, and I didn't want that in case it was something delicate. So by easing those, it kind of makes like a little four, four jaw clamp around it. So um, some of you may say, well, you know, just drill a hole in a piece of wood and, you know, scrap wood and use that. I've done that. That's the way I did it for years, okay? And then there was sometimes when I, I needed a, a scrap piece of wood and the perfect one, the perfect size, the perfect, perfect thickness had a hole in it because I was using it to hold something. <laughs> so this simple little thingamajig, it came out exactly like I envisioned it. Um, this is going to be very, very useful for me. Um, fit many, many sizes projects. And again, now you could take this, you could paint it, you could stain it. Um, you know, you could do whatever you want. Make this as elaborate as you want. Make it as simple as you want. Or you could just use the old-fashioned way to drill some holes in um, <laughs> pieces of wood. But uh, it worked out great. Very, very pleased with it. So I want to thank everyone for coming along. Hopefully you found this useful. Um, I hope you all are staying very, very safe out there. And you all know I appreciate you all. And I hope you're having a great, great day. And uh, we'll see you on the next one.